Okie dokie. Lot to get to today. No time to waste. We got to get right into it. Like, I'm already wasting too much time on this preamble because there's just, there's just so much to get to. Do you agree? I agree. Let's do it. I just feel like there's a lot. I'm Greg Tepper. That's Greg Powers. And this is This Week in Cruton. It's This Week in Recruiting. Greg Powers of Next Level Athlete. Follow him on Twitter at Power Scout. Follow Next Level Athlete on Twitter. Next Level D1C is fine work at texasfootball.com slash recruiting. And, of course, this is brought to you by our good chicken friends at Chicken Express. Chicken Express. Oh, that would slap right now. It mm. smells good. I was driving by Chicken Express the other day, and I rolled down my window. Got a whiff. And that was simultaneously an excellent and terrible choice. Yeah, it's fixing to say, you want to talk about playing yourself. Because uh, on one hand, smells great. On the other hand, smells great. <laughs> you I'm know? going straight there after the show. As a matter of fact, it does sound like th- yeah, it, that's for not some a bad reason idea. it a, sounds amazingly good. Today. Like, like uh, I don't want to. I don't want to tell our 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 salespeople how to do their job. But like, whoever came up with the idea of making sure that the segment uh, about <laughs> sponsored by Chicken Express is on Wednesday, that's a smart move because today yeah. is like a really good Chicken Express. Wednesday's mm-hmm. a like mate. Well, and the other time, Ooh. like we're doing this during lunchtime. Like they're all yeah. out at lunch, and we're sitting here talking about good chicken. Is this the number one ranked Chicken Express day? Wednesday? Maybe. Why I not? So I think Sunday'd be a pretty popular. Ooh, Sunday's yeah. good too. Sunday again, Express it goes day. back to the family it, thing. I would say I haven't it, done the family meal. Yep. Yet, so that's 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 true. Just fried chicken is a good Sunday meal. In yeah, yeah, versatility. Absolutely. The Lord, baby yes. Jesus likes yeah. fried chicken. Yes. <laughs> Celebrate the resurrection <laughs> of our Lord with chicken. chicken. <laughs> uh, it's this week in recruiting. A lot to get to. We'll start with our prospect on the rise. Our prospect on the rise going out east to Marshall to talk about their 2023 soon to be senior safety Montana Warren who's picked up a Power 5 offer this week from TCU. He's also got offers from places like Louisiana, Louisiana Tech, and Incarnate Word. Uh, This is the first Power 5 offer from Montana Warren for an all-district kid from a year ago and a guy who you think could be – this may not be the last Power 5 offer for him. No, it it may not be, but one thing that I'll point out is that, you know, this feels like one of those guys that – TCU traditionally in the Gary Patterson era would go out to East Texas and get and turn into an NFL player. Mm -hmm. You know, he has a really good background because he has experience playing cornerback and hits like a safety. I think he added, you know, over 15 pounds heading into his junior season. I think I read an article where he bumped up from 165 to 183, and you could tell that he was playing at a different speed and a different – um, you know, had a different mentality, I guess, on the field on his tape from last season. He transferred from Elysian Fields to Marshall last year. His father was a coach on the team. So, uh, coach's kid, um, smart, savvy, and I think he'll give Jack Alvarez a really good player at the back end of that defense to kind of add some stability and uh, just be one of those guys that you can depend on to, to be, you know, a hard hitter and reliable in coverage. What I think is interesting is you take a look at the offer list and he's got a pair from Louisiana schools and then he's got now in, in incarnate word, you know, big time FCS program. Um, and this is the first power five offer. But what I think is, is interesting is the geographical element of this. Right. You know what I mean? Like very clearly Louisiana, those Louisiana schools went digging into East Texas, which is functionally local for them. Uh, right. And and discovered him first, but uh, now I think that the secret is out about uh, about Montana Warren. So pretty interesting to keep an eye on him. Montana Warren picked up a TCU offer this week. Let's go to our commit of the week. Our commit of the week going down to Austin to Austin Del Valley. It's not Austin Del Valle. That's in El Paso. Uh, to talk about their wide receiver Braylon James, soon to be a senior. He has offers from all over the place, but he is committed. To the Golden Domers, Notre Dame picks up the services of Braylon James, a DCT, a four-star prospect. We have him as the number five rated wide receiver in the state of Texas in the class of 2023, and he's going to take his talents to South Bend. Man, he he had me fooled. I thought he was going to pick Stanford. Oh, really? He pulled yeah, the fast really one on you. I thought that he was going to wow. go to Stanford. Just kind of um, we, academic-wise. We inter- well, we interviewed him a you know about a month and a half, two months back, and Stanford was a school that was really high on his list, and he you know. He, that school checked a lot of boxes, but I guess it's reasonable to say that Notre Dame, both athletically and academically, checks many of the same boxes. It's not quite the academic institution that Stanford is, but I mean, it's not. I mm-hmm. mean, Notre Dame's pretty nice, you know. So, uh, yeah, kind of surprised me a little bit, and I think that they're getting a player here that is has possesses big play potential. He's six foot two, one seventy five, but he plays, you know, 
more on tape to me at like six four. Some of the stuff that really surprises me about his, you know, because he's such a rangy guy, is you'll see him here on kickoff return that he's pretty slippery and has good top end speed to make defenders miss and and pick up yards after the catch. And uh, he has a, a plus catch radius, so. Uh, he has all the ball skills to be, you know, considered as one of the top national prospects in the country at the wide receiver position. And Notre Dame is doing a pretty good job behind Marcus Freeman of establishing a pretty good recruiting base here in Texas. You know, they also have a commitment from Peyton Bowen from Denton Geyer. So that's two of the top rated players in the in our DCTF top 50 that's uh, going to play for the Irish. Yeah, uh, obviously Marcus Freeman doing a little bit of work there at, at Notre Dame, and, and, and they pick up a big-time wide receiver from the Austin area and Braylon James out of Del Valley. Uh, it's this week in recruiting with Greg Powers and Next Level Athlete here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation at hashtag TF Today. Let's matriculate now to our underclassman of the week. Our underclassman of the week is a big one. Uh, it is San Marcos offensive tackle Ori Williams. Uh, now, Ori Williams is a name that I heard, I think, because I saw like Mike Roach tweet about him. Yeah. Um, this is like a year ago. So he transferred last year to San Marcos. Because of the transfer rules, he had to sit out his sophomore season, um, played at the sub-varsity level, which I can't even imagine. Because uh, Ori Williams is an offensive tackle who, uh, soon to be a junior, is 6'8 and 320. Oh, <laughs> God. And he was playing his poor mom. Do you know what that food bill looks like? Do you, do you know what that JV t- game <laughs> looks like? <laughs> well, you're getting ready. To, you're getting ready to see it. He had an offer this week from Texas. Uh, he's got a bunch of offers from Baylor, Tech, UTSA, Houston, Oklahoma State, etc. Uh, watch My this man play gosh. junior varsity football. This looks like the blind side. <laughs> Yeah, he's a big fella, and what's interesting is he— You're going to split him out? <laughs> <laughs> he's a big fella. Throwing the ball. <laughs> he transferred from San Marcos to— Oh, El- my God! To El Campo. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> he can throw, too! I'm sorry for the podcast listeners. God. you got to go back and watch this segment. Isaiah Delion, watch out. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Lord, okay, mercy. anyway, go on with your actual <laughs> analysis. No, it's a fun. It was, I knew it was going to be a fun highlight to watch. You know, he, it was perfect timing that he picked up the offer from Texas, and then we got a. I think we do have a lot of fun watching some of these big time prospects when they play on the sub varsity level, whether they're freshmen or juniors. But he was a guy who transferred from San Marcos to El Campo and then transferred back. So right. I think he they kept him down on the sub varsity level, um, you know, because of the multiple transfers. And he's a guy who I think is probably the top prospect on that San Marcos team heading into mm-hmm. the 2022 season. He is a guy who's catching a lot of college interest and you can easily see why he really passes the eyeball test. Not only is he tall and big, he has a, a great wingspan, mm-hmm. long arms, um, you know, looks like a, a, an offensive tackle. He's because of his size, he could easily come inside and, and play some of the interior positions as well. We didn't used to say that, you know, it yeah. didn't used to be, if you were six, eight, you couldn't play guard yeah, you couldn't play guard or center because the quarterback couldn't yeah. throw the ball over you. But now the quarterbacks are bigger and the mm-hmm. splits are wider, so that's kind of changed. So he's a guy who could probably play all around the offensive front. But uh, he's going to be no strangers to getting offers, so keep this guy on your radar. You got as a as a coach of an opposing player, like you got it. That's got to be one of those things, like brother. Just try your best. Just go out there and give it your all, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. well, and you're still going to get squashed like a bug. <laughs> my son played it, you know, three, four years ago on the junior varsity level and having a guy like this come onto the field is all inspiring. Just, can you just imagine, oh you gosh. know what I mean? Like, can you imagine? Cause there's some of those kids on at, at the sub varsity level that are, they're not going to play varsity yeah, ball. Right. They're small. Yes. Smaller. Yeah. JV is where they're capping out. Yeah. yeah. I would say, like, our defensive <laughs> our defensive ends on the team may have been 5'9 sometimes, yes. you know? So, to go against someone that's 6'8", it's, like, very intimidating. Like, co- coach, do I have to? <laughs> Ori Williams is his name. Uh, make sure you remember that name. Let's round it all out with our Recruit of the Week. Our Recruit of the Week, we're going down to South Oak Cliff, the defending 5A Division II state champions, to talk about their soon-to-be senior corner uh, cornerback, Javon Thomas. Um, who picked up an offer this or committed this week to Texas A&M, had offers from all over the place, including in-state offers from Texas, Texas Tech, TCU, and other big-time out-of-state offers like Oklahoma, Notre Dame, and Stanford. We have him as a four-star at yep. DCTF. We have him as the number five-rated cornerback, 51 overall. And you think this is a guy who needs a little bit of polish, but 
that all the tools are there that you can see a, a real lockdown defender. Well, I mean, when you're no, when you have to put it to context, right? When you say a little bit of polish for a guy who's the number thirty player in the yeah. state, that's a different kind yes. of polish. And he's a guy who's played multiple positions. I think that he could play safety if he needed to, but he's really emerged as one of the top cornerback prospects in the state. Uh, plays opposite of Malik Muhammad at South Oak Cliff, and I think that South Oak Cliff defensive secondary is probably um, the best in the nation, mm-hmm. you know? Mm. I mean, yeah. I don't really see how... I mean, it's hard It's hard to imagine outside of, I don't know, what modern day's got cooking or something like well, that. Well, I mean, even like, IMG, like, yeah. I can't even imagine that, there's a, that you could put together a secondary that's better right. than these guys. Um, I, th- I mean, I think they have five T1 recruits in the secondary mm-hmm. alone. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty good Mm -hmm. Uh, but Texas A&M continues to keep the momentum going with in-state recruiting they picked up a commitment from Bravion Rogers last week and right after we went off the air Javon Thomas of course the trigger on his commitment to Texas A&M last Wednesday so we had to make sure that we made mention to him of him so I snuck in a second commitment into the notebook this week but it is I mean it is cruton season Mm -hmm. like it is really (laughs) starting to pick up as it's like the domino effect, you know, you know, because now Texas A&M has two corner commits. What does that mean for JV and Toviano? Yes. I mean, I know they're taking JV and Toviano if he wants to come to. Correct. Yeah. We'll to figure Texas. it out. Yeah. If he wants to come to Texas A&M. Seems like a good problem to have. Yeah. But th- these things start to snowball. Guys start to come off the board. You know, these spots, which I saw your interview or your your video last week about you know the recruiting yes. numbers in high school starting mm-hmm. to come down that creates a fervor even mm-hmm. more so because the spots are tighter mm-hmm. right and and guys are going to start making these commitments by the end of next month in the, the evaluation period uh, i think 60 percent of our top 100 may be committed yeah that's that'll be wow. very interesting, you know, and 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 you know, we'll certainly keep an eye on that and keep you posted here. I'll be honest, you said I saw your piece last week, and I was like, "Boy, I talk a lot." You're gonna need to be more specific. Yeah, it was your recruiting piece. Oh, I'm glad you liked it, buddy. Well, he didn't say he liked it. He said that he read it. One guy we do like is Greg Powers uh, of Next Level Athlete. Follow him Fact. on Twitter at G Power Scout. Follow Next Level Athlete Twitter Next Level D One C. His fine work at TexasFootball.com slash recruiting. Powers, appreciate your time. We will do it again. No, we won't. No, we will not do it again next week. We can, do you want to do it like Thursday? Keep May, Thursday? Yeah, maybe. You and just produce us on what's the next on the week? Uh, we're out of town. Uh, mm, well, we'll provide some good coverage from the Melissa State qualifying 7-on-7 seven seven tournament. So if there's not a show. Are you going we'll on Saturday? Some, we'll have some Cruton content for you. Yeah. Nice. That's Greg Powers. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.